Hi, everybody. Welcome back to another What Else Is Going On podcast episode, aka We Go Podcast. I'm your girl, Taria. So if you are watching, you already know this beautiful face that's on the other side of the camera because we are professional here, okay? <laughs> um, she is funny, smart, witty, a level of sarcasm that my family would embrace her immediately because that's how we operate. She's so funny. Um, we are cousins in a former life, and maybe even this life. Um, I'll told her I'll never forget the time I, when we had kind of we, we had like first met, and I was talking to her, and I was like, "Yeah, she might not have remember." I was talking to her and Artie, and I was like, "Yeah, um, my family." You know, I know black people say I got Indian in my family. I said, "But now I said Indian, right? I'm learning, right? We're learning, right?" I said, and she goes. And I said something about the area. She goes, you're Southwest Asian? I was like, no way. I think I said that wrong. Um, (laughs) Native American. Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) But for those of y'all that are not watching, although you should be, but listening, you recognize that voice. The one, the only, the lovely, again, the funny, the smart, um, the woman who has a POV that I love to listen to, Miss nor hi taria <laughs> hi hi baby gorgeous hi hi fireplace <laughs> <laughs> y'all know the impression that she's doing i told her <laughs> do it y'all know the impression that she's doing the Coke drinking, you know, somebody asked her on um, Instagram, um, was she on Coke? And she said, no, diet, diet Coke. Yeah, they said, is she on cocaine? And she said, yeah. no, just diet Coke. <laughs> the fact, and she was like, thanks for telling me my energy is high, though. I was like, I will give her credit for reframing. If that's not reframing, I don't know what is. Well, did you hear what she did to Tom? Tom. Hamlet? Our, our Tom. Our Tom. So this is hot off the presses because I just did an episode with Tom yesterday. So you'll remember this last time, last week when you were on my podcast, I told you how Tom retweeted this thing or posted this thing in his stories because Lisa Barlow had done like a reel being like Diet Coke on the plane, Diet Coke and Fashion Week, Diet Coke did it out, right? (laughs) And so Tom posted that in his stories and said, and Diet Coke at Ted Cruz rallies. And Taria. She responded to Tom's Instagram story share. And you want to know what she said? Please. I'm do I do I want to know because I'm ready to fly to Utah, but go ahead. She said, fuck off. (laughs) No. (laughs) She said, fuck off. And Tom said that she responded. She said that immediately. Immediately. Guys, go to dumpster dive. I just talked to him about it yesterday. Um, I'm on my way to Ikea to get a big like 52 by 30 inch picture frame. And I'm going to have Tom forward me that so I can print it out. And we are framing that. Yeah. It's so fun. Oh, here's the thing. I think also that that not is a, a denial. Go ahead. Yeah. Also not a denial. Uh, definitely. And I think like, that's who Lisa Barlow actually is. It's the woman who was caught on the hot mic. Right. Yes. And I think that that's so funny. Like, I think that that's so funny because it's like, I think everybody on the internet wants to make her like icon, camp whatever and it's like she's she's a terrible woman guys yes yes uh, the, she i'll never forget again i've i've agreed with carlos king about some things oh but one when, when after she had that hot mic moment and people were like she's iconic or her diet coke she's iconic and he tweeted y'all are just using the word icon like it used to mean something it doesn't now mean anything nothing. All she has is that rant she has she has not even she don't even have enough skin in the game in the words of Zorenza. Yeah. To be called iconic. You have not put in the time. No. Like the housewives that we're going to talk about. Yeah. Today. Yeah. Y'all. Um, Nor is here because we're going to talk about the real housewives of the red states. I mean, the real housewives of Orange County. <laughs> <laughs> um, that we know and love. Um, mm-hmm. Do love this franchise. I do love this franchise. Um, we're going to talk about it. I think. Jen is one of the best things to come out of this franchise, hands down. Um, I, with my hands up, swear to God, okay, (laughs) as the Lord, as my witness, hallelujah, you can never make me hate that woman. I love Jen 
so much <laughs> in a way where I'm like, you might be the dumbest person on earth, but bless your fucking heart. And okay? you're not playing a role like, I didn't know, like almost like how we talked about maybe Chanel Ion kind of does. Uh -huh. She really is who Jen is really who she is. She really is who she is. Yeah. And I love her for it. I think she's. She's wonderful. That scene that she had with her son this episode. Oh, finding out on camera that, hey, he doesn't want to live with you anymore. And also that says a lot about her relationship with her son, where her son was able to say to her, the only thing you ever talked to me about is all the things that are wrong with me. Yeah. For her as child to be able to communicate that to her means something because we all know i mean i'm i have a 10 year old who acts like he's 13 but you actually have had teenagers yeah when they get to that age they don't talk they don't share what's really bothering them and the fact that this kid said it and she reacted as well as she could she said yeah. i love you that's okay you want to go somewhere else that's fine i'm sorry i just don't want you to be in a situation that i'm in because i see so much of myself with you as in you oh she has a diff she's a different type. She's the type of parents that you and I and our generation are striving to be because our parents loved us and they yeah. did. They worked with the tools they had to provide for us to make sure that we had a good life. Yeah. But there was no I cannot imagine telling my mom. I think maybe she I actually wrote a letter to a friend of mine and she found it and she had a lot um, to say, which, again, because there was she didn't get to talk to her mom about her feelings and her mom yeah. didn't her mom so the fact that she now i could do that now with my mom if i needed to yeah. but, um nor actually overheard a conversation with me and my son and he tells me <laughs> everything <laughs> it was one of the best things ever it was so good it was so good it, there were so many detours and the thing is he didn't, he just didn't want to get off the phone with you which That's, i'm like I, yes I that was it. the best yeah. like for your college age child to not want to get off the phone with you like <sighs> mom goals I, let me tell you and sometimes i'll feel bad because i'm like oh my god i'm in the middle of doing something so i try to remember to like take time out like i i communicate by text a lot yeah. but they will call and i told you like my daughter calls every single night my youngest but yeah it's so <laughs> every night she's and she does not play about that she and she calls her dad's phone she's like hello, hello. <laughs> last night he told her okay i'm gonna let you go and she goes oh you're gonna let me go <laughs> like we know but and i love the way jen like you said the way she reacted of course as a parent you're hurt but also you could tell that she was like okay i need to make some adjustments because uh, my immediate thought and then because of how you're raised but then you kind of back up and reassess the situation which i'm sure you do with your kids as well my immediate thought was like how dare you like she lets you do whatever you want you're ungrateful but it's like Pauls, that's how that's how his life has been. And I'm sure this is a big change for him. He's moving into, they had to leave a house that he was in for years. His parents are like actually getting a divorce for real. Her, his mom is with someone new. I'm on a TV show. Like, you know, mm -hmm. it's a lot. So I can imagine. And, and I appreciated the way she, you could tell in her mind, she's like, okay, I got to think about this because I want you to know that I see so much in you. And parents do that sometimes. When you have a child that you see so much in, you do tend to point out what they're doing wrong because you're like, no, 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 because I know you can do better mm -hmm. as opposed to maybe reinforcing the positive. You know, parents, yeah. no one's a perfect parent, but yeah. I love how she handled it. Yeah, it was so good. I love her. Well, speaking of good, let's first get into the episode. Now, I just put bullet points on the scenes and mm -hmm. I figure we can get in depth with some, not the other. Um, so when the episode starts out, we see Gina going to Shannon's house and she pulls two lemons. Um, during my first watch, I thought it was off Shannon's tree. And then I was like, hold up. Just picking them off her neighbor's tree. I was like, and those are the things that I'm like, would you have done that if there were no cameras? And I hate to think that with someone like Gina, but it's like, would you, you know, certain housewives you're like, okay, that's who they truly are. But then also they are filming a show and we do want it to be entertaining. What I was thinking was that's white on white crime, because what <laughs> I know about white people is that you do not fuck with their yards. You are not. You do not get to pick something off of somebody's yard. White people don't even let you 
stand on their grass. They don't even let your kids walk on the grass during trick or treating. OK, yeah. yes. Oh, that is so funny. White on white crime. Yes, that should be the title of this episode. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> There's that's a lot it. of that going on. I mean, on. there's that, that's housewives for you. <laughs> <laughs> I like it best. I like my housewives best when it's white on white crime, which is why I'm loving OC right now. Yes, it is. So <laughs> So she goes in and, and they're talking about, uh, first of all, Shannon looks good. She actually looked happy in this episode. <sighs> she did. didn't like her face. It like the happiness reached her face. Um, Gina is talking about Katie, how they kind of tried to patch it up because Shannon wants to know, well, what happened when I left? Shannon goes into what her lawyer said. I was shocked, not shocked because John, the big dick deviant, nor Alexis seemed very smart. But to use the words, I need some insurance in case Shannon goes off the rails. That man's a monster. Yeah. If you're really, if the $75,000 is really what you're after, then why are we, you not signing a non-disparagement clause? And why are you still going after her? Why are you suing her? Because who cares? I just want my money then. Yeah. Like, what is this really about if it's not? And again, I, I've, say, I've said this every single week constantly. Shannon never said anything bad about this piece of shit. It was Tamara. It was Heather. It was Gina. It was everybody else on the cast. But Shannon yep. actually was <laughs> paralyzed, yes. screaming, crying about the fact that she didn't want these people saying negative things about her, about right. her, her, her boyfriend. And the fact that last week he went and watched what happens live, I mean, he still couldn't really talk about what she did wrong. He's like, oh, this thing about me paying for everything. OK, or her paying for everything of mine. OK, what about it? You were in even a relationship. If, I mean, even okay. if you didn't, even if you are claiming that she didn't pay for everything. You shaking her down for $75,000 makes you look like a cheap bitch. Yes, it makes. Yeah, yeah. So this isn't helping. It's just he's a disaster. And I was really glad that that he his lawyers did that, though, because I think that's why Shannon looks so rested. It's because she's like, I did what I could. There's nothing else I can do. He's making an ass of himself. And I'm the winner here. And there's nothing else for me to do. And I love the fact that she said, my lawyer called me. And I didn't know if it was a mix up, like she meant to say text. But I was like, if he did call her, she was smart to then text him back because I have. Yeah. It in text form. This is actually what was said. Yep. And jumping forward, even though I don't, I don't can't I don't see it for Emily when she read what extortion means. It was like, yeah. Yeah, guys, um, Bravo Docket did a couple of episodes about Shannon and John Jansen. So definitely go check that out because. Yeah, it's just gross. Like whatever is happening is just nasty and mm. and pointless. And Alexis, which we'll get to crying about at the end of the episode. I was like, oh. I wish they would have laughed in her face. Um, oh. Then we get to Katie, Jen, Emily, and uh, they all go out to eat. Jen pays the bill. Mm. And Emily sits in her confessional making a jab, sort of like the jab that Heather made at her about the dress being tight. Which was it a jab? Probably. Yes. But yes. no. Um, but she made a jab that uh, Jen can't pay her rent, but she can pay for coffee. You get what you give, Emily. But anyway, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. we're all having this conversation. I loved how Emily shared about like her parenting and her confessional. Like, I feel like I failed in these areas and I got to lay the hammer down. I don't even know how to do it. And I like I like her and Katie's relationship. Yeah, it's nice. It's it's always nice to see these women as moms because it's the times that I have to remember that like they're also human beings like trying to raise families, you know, like I have really great girlfriends that are moms and we're all raising like the same age kids and stuff. And there are, it, you know, there's been times when we've gotten into spats or whatever, or like we've had disagreements, but then we see how much our kids love each other. And that kind of sometimes resolves it because you're like, we're all fucking exhausted. Like we're yeah. all just trying to raise kids. It's fine. I mean, it was all great, except Tamara will never get it from me Ooh. on the parenting front. Yeah, yeah. Okay, no, that's one person who I will always say is a piece of shit when it comes to parenting. I was in her confessionals. Okay, a couple years ago when it came out that Simon had cancer, she was talking positive about him, and now all of a sudden. We're back to, I hate him. He was a horrible husband, which all of it may be true, but I just think the switch up is interesting. The sympathy, the wanting the sympathy now from the audience, the switch up is like, 
it's so phony. It's truly so phony. Like she's so full of it. I can't like I I really like her daughter yes. a lot, and I like yes. the way her daughter says what's on her mind. I also like her other son that's been on the show. I think he was yeah. on the COVID season. He's a nice kid, but like at the end of the day, I will never forgive Tamara for enforcing like for bringing Ryan to our lives. This- yeah absolute dog shit person this insurrectionist piece of shit yes. who is terrible so it's like i think that tamra is really trying to like fix her parenting image this season by bringing this daughter on yeah, me um, too. but you know it doesn't help because even that daughter is always like hey i don't want to talk about this i don't want to talk about dad i don't want to talk about my other sibling let's, let's not talk about sydney and tamra does it anyway and her daughter really reinforcing later on in the episode, you don't have kids to yeah. fix something or unless yeah. you really want them. And I, for some reason, that made me think of her other daughter's post about her not being a good mom, her leaving them, mm-hmm. not having food. And then Tamara saying Simon wrote that uh, her daughter didn't really write it. But when the way she was very insistent on that, it was like almost as if she was speaking from experience being that child. Yep. Yeah, like, absolutely. Wow. So, well, yeah, that was um, also in that scene, Emily talked about how she felt singled out. And listen, me calling Emily a hypocrite a little bit. Well, I don't even know if you would say kind of sort of hypocrite because she's basically she does to Jen what she says Heather does to her. I still understand how she feels, though, looking around, saying you're the only one that had to bring jeans. Mm-hmm. I would ask, feel that way as well. I'm um, like, wow. But. The way she goes about it, I, th- this whole season with Emily to me is I'm triggered. I'm always triggered by something someone else does, but never takes into consideration your actions may be triggering mm-hmm. a person and how they react mm-hmm. towards you. It's always it's the Emily show. And at this point, you've been triggered for many seasons and I'm tired. Yeah. And um, I'm going to say this as a person who has struggled like i'm a i'm a subject matter expert when it comes to body dysmorphia i've got major issues i've been in therapy for years and years and years about all this kind of stuff how you feel about your body is not somebody else's problem Mm. yeah and that's that's the reality right emily does these things where she does these like goofy things like she loves tacos and eats a purse sandwich and it almost feels like she does that because she doesn't want somebody else to say do you love food are you fat are you a fat person who loves Mm -hmm. food so she sort of pokes fun at herself before somebody else can do it because she doesn't like herself no one else is gonna do that no one else is gonna be like emily you're a big fat bitch like who (laughs) loves food nobody has said that to her but she feels that way about herself so she's like before somebody else can call out how i eat i'm just gonna make a joke of it and you're exactly right the way she dishes it out she never she can never take it i mean she couldn't even take the fact that her best friend said, I feel like you're getting kind of mean now that you're hanging out with Tamara. Right. She couldn't deal with it. She's like, I've always been mean. It's like, OK, but you're not doing anything about it. Like you're you're now being mean to Gina, who is your best friend. Like yes. so, and the way she handles that stuff. Exactly. And so when she brings up the thing about how she had to bring uh, her own jeans and she was wearing a size 12 dress. Mm-hmm. And that made her sad. I think that that's it's valid that yeah. those things made her sad, but it's not anybody else's problem to fix. And the way she will talk about how she approaches it with Heather later. But at that point, like I thought what Jen and Katie said was great. They were like, oh, yeah, you should probably just talk to her because like yeah. I, I could see why that made you feel bad. I'm sorry that you felt that way. Just talk to Heather. And that's yeah, that's it. What's more? I, I, if I was in their position, I'd say the same thing. Yeah. And I think it's interesting that her going off on Jen and then her relating it back to her trauma growing up, blah, blah, blah. They met up. Jen told her, listen, I admire you. I want to be like you. That wasn't enough for her to still stop making jokes about Jen's finances. Yeah. So it's yeah. like, yeah, absolutely. girl, you get yeah. what you give. You get it how you live. Like, get what yeah. you We flashed to Heather and uh, Miss Heather Dubrow and 
Meredith. I wonder if she took a bath before the event. Um, they are, I thought they were hosting, but they actually, what, gave an award out. They presented, yeah. Yes, they presented at the 35th annual um, GLAAD Awards. And I, you know, Heather talked about how she's been involved with that organization before her children even came out. I, I do think no matter her ways, and I think you and I have talked about this, at the core of her, I do think anybody who's a good parent to me is like, because we're all imperfect people. Yeah. When you love when you love your kids and openly support your kids uh, in a world where uh, the world is telling you not to, even if your own religion or your own beliefs mm -hmm. are telling you not to, I feel like you are a person that does have a good heart. Uh, to remember last summer, we had such a good like heart to heart talking. Yes. About this. So like we, you and I, I met. Crying. We were, we were both so emotional. Yes. It was so emotional, but we talked about this, about like how, you know, we, we, you know, Emily says it all the time. I don't know how to be a parent because I didn't have good parents. That's really sad that you don't have that. And I think that we've all, but we've all struggled as parents of new generation raising kids because our parents didn't raise kids in the two thousands. Our no. parents raised kids in the nineties and seventies and eighties. Right. Yeah. So my, um, the thing I love that Heather said, which is uh, Heather and Terry, they both said it, which is that like we give our kids so much love that they actually don't even realize how bad it is out there. Yes. And you and I talked about this sort of when we were talking last summer, which is that, you know, this when you come from a religious community, when you come from a conservative community, when you come from families where you know that there is going to be pushback for your queer children, it's one thing to protect your child from everyone else, right? Yeah. But there's this other thing that you have to work through as a parent, which is the your relationship with God and how you feel your child is going to be received by God if that's something that you believe in. And that's been like one of the hardest things, right? Like we yeah. got emotional about it because it's so hard to unlearn that feeling because you're like, but I know that my job as a mother in the eyes of God is to love my child unconditionally. The same way he loves me unconditionally. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And so I, you know, say what you will about Heather Dubrow. You don't like her for a, a, a variety of reasons. I'm sure there's plenty for people. You cannot come for her for how she raises her kids. Those yeah. are those. She does great. Um, I think that she is. I think her being up there is great. You know, Meredith. Like, I don't get it because like, yeah, she had this gay son, Brooks, that she brought on. But like, what has Brooks Marks done besides give us a sweatsuit? And a couple of looks, if you will, like the glasses, you know, like, I don't, I don't really like, That's I don't, it. I don't know and why. That's it. Okay, great. But like, you're, yeah. he's kind of dull, you know, yeah. there's, there's, uh, they wanted to make him an icon. Remember season yeah. one, they wanted oh. to make him this. No. And yeah, no, I can't. So, um, but it was really nice to see that. It was nice to see Alexis there. But like Alexis, I think she's still not allowed to talk about her kids on camera yes. because the way she's talking about her kids also, it I don't know. Arthi said this, and I think it's important to bring it up here. She kind of talks about her hey, kids Arthi. being her, yeah, her kids being queer, like like it's like a disease. Like she's <laughs> you know what I mean? Like my situation. Yeah. This. I forget the exact wording because I caught that too. I was like. <laughs> when she was with the lady, it like, and Heather was like, thank you for coming. And she was like, da, da, da. it was like, like, yeah, I'm like, can you talk about your situation? Like it, it potentially her situation is that she is struggling with a similar thing that you and I talked about, right? Which is you're coming from a conservative space. You're raising a trans child. How do you, how do you um, reconcile with the two worlds? Right. right? It's possible that that is what Alexis is talking about with I the way so. she because one of her kids she, is trans, right? Yeah, but when she talks about it, the way she talks about it, it genuinely sounds like she has a terminally ill child. It's like right. maybe kids like gay, probably. Like, <laughs> are they in fact trans? Like Ace is, yeah, trans, you know? yeah. That's what I was because I think that's on Heather's podcast last year. I think it was last year, or maybe even. The year before, I think she talked about that's how her and Alexis reconnected. Yeah. So I'm like, okay. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That was a lot. Yeah. yeah. <laughs>
Oh, oh, Alexis. Okay, we're going to get to her. So then we move on to Katie and her daughter, Tamara. And her daughter, they meet up, they meet candles. Um, Yeah, they make candles. Oh, but they do talk about, you know. Pa- parenting and all that. All right, great. Moving on. But I move it. Did you see the look, though, that when they were talking about candles, did Katie's daughter joke about either saying, I'm going to be a prostitute or something? And then what was it? And then the look that Tamara's daughter gave her mom, I was like, oh, she said she said that's good. That could be my stripper name. Yes. Stripper name. That's what it is. Yes. Yes. I know. It's you know, I will say this. Katie has this really heartful moment in the confessional talking about her son and how emotional yes. it is that so she has to send her son back on a plane, all this stuff genuinely believed in genuine tears. And then it cuts yeah. to Tamara doing her weird Botox Ooh. cry. Ooh. And it's really hard because, you know, I she has not I've cried this, <laughs> this season 18 of Orange County. She has not cried real tears in 17 seasons. <laughs> and she I'm wasn't obsessed. on the first one. I'm obsessed with Tamara's fake crying. It's so bad. She did it the other day when she was looking like Incredible Hulk on the internet. Yes. <laughs> we could have the show. Have the show. Girl. <laughs> Stupid. Stop it. <laughs> like, she, like you're upset that Vicky's talking about your parenting situation, but at the same time, you're talking about Shannon's drinking, which then could affect her children. <laughs> No, they can't think that far out. No, that's okay. it. They don't think asking for out. too much. Yeah. She kind of still looks the same. Just refreshed. Okay. I mean, not even really. Re- okay. No, she looks exactly the same. I said, I thought at least even if I thought like she'd have like baby bottom skin, like even <laughs> if the, the same, like she was shot, she was glowing, but then I was like, but is that um highlighter? Like I couldn't really. And Here's the other thing. She did what white women are always doing, which is she did her face, but not her neck and her chest. Come on. on. (laughs) She looks looks insane. Insane. I was just going to say insane. (laughs) Your neck looks like what your face was going through when you got all this done. And now you have this smooth face. And like you said, the neck, like, oh, my gosh. I have a theory about it also. You know how white people only use their hand to wash their bodies and they don't wash their legs? I'm hanging up. <laughs> <laughs> They've never heard of exfoliating your like there's no there's no exfoliating or your hanging. body. There's no um first of all, they barely shower. Secondly, <laughs> and, and they have come out. And by and the let way, us know I wanna that. say, I wanna say not all white people, yes, but we, you it, guys love to write articles every few months. Somebody writes an article about how they can keep their shoes on inside of somebody else's house and how they don't need to shower. Okay. Oh. <laughs> but mm, they don't shower every day and they use their hands to wash their bodies rather than a loofah or something. By the way, I understand the the thing about not wanting to use a washcloth because you think it's gross. They make silicone. I have a silicone thing that I bought from Amazon. I throw that bitch into the dishwasher every few weeks or every few, not every few weeks, every few days. (laughs) I throw it into the dishwasher. It cleans it. It's great, right? But they don't exfoliate. There's no exfoliation. So Yeah, girl. So then like, and then there's no lotioning. That to me, I exfoliate. I'm almost to the white meat, to the bone. <laughs> and then I, when I, and I always have to pee before the shower and after. And when I tell you my toilet seat is shiny like Tamara's face because of all the oil and Vaseline <laughs> and right on that, thing. that is on my, that I put on my behind. <laughs> and then I have to wipe that down because he's going to slide off of it if he, if, he, <laughs> if he needs to sit down. Like it's a process. And when you get it down, when you've been doing it for years, it shouldn't even take you that long. No, like it's so I don't, under, I don't understand how they don't itch. Ugh. If my skin gets dry like that, I itch. Yeah, of course. Like I exfoliate to the point where sometimes, you know what I hate? I love tree hut, like that exfoliation. Yeah. Stuff. I ha- I stand under my side of the shower with my little thing. And then on Corey's side of the shower, he has the detachable thing. I still end up with little pieces I feel like on my body after I get out of the shower. That's just, just a random thing. Like I literally try to sh- like, wh- it's like sticking to my body. Yeah, I get it. I understand. You understand. You understand. Our pain. I get brown, brown people pain. We get, <laughs> we get it. I understand. It's okay. like I went on a trip 
last year with a couple of brown women and uh, like black and brown women. And we got off the plane. We were in Europe. We got off the plane and we like got right into it. We started walking around and whatever. And at some point we were both taught. We're all tired before dinner. And one of my friends said, listen, I know some of you might want to like go take a nap, but I got to go wash my ass Yeah, because it's been too long. And I was like, girl, I get it. She's like, we're all black and brown. We understand. And I was like, yes, I get it. Say no more. We don't walk around like that. No, I got to get this airport off of me. When I had uh, C-19 back two years ago, I literally slept for like three or four days straight. Corey will tell you like I, but when I woke up, I could be, I was so weak. I could barely walk when I would, I would shuffle to the bathroom, turn that shower on. Of course. Wash my body. And I'm holding on to the wall. And somebody told me, girl, you didn't have to shower. Yes, no. Ma'am. Oh no, ma'am. No, no, I, three or four days, unless I'm in the hospital. And even then I need somebody to come and get up under this, um, <laughs> I will be yes. calling my girlfriend or Corey. I need you to get in between everything. Like at least wash me down. I dragged myself into that shower because there was absolutely no way I was going. I told my mom and she was like, Mm-mm. like yeah. we're not going four or five days Mm-mm. without showering. Um, but the person that told me that friend, love you if they listen, but they were not black or brown. <laughs> well, there you go. Anyway, Tamara, your face looks the same and your skin looks stupid and bad. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Um, then we get to Vicky and Shannon. They go to St. Louis for their show. Um, same old Vicky and Shannon. They go to open the, the hotel door. Of course, Antics. they're not fumbling. Yeah. I like um, Doug, Doug Buden. I used to listen to him when I used to listen to Jeff Lewis live years ago. Oh, nice. He, he, he seems very nice and was fun. I met him at BravoCon and he seemed like what I've heard now, I don't know if that's changed since then, but he just always was like pleasant and funny, just like somebody that you would want to be around. That was like, so I was like, that's cool that he's hosting um, their show. They were going to, um, they are now the new Adele. Um, Cause Vicky mentioned her twice. That they sold out like Adele and that they're going to do the canon. I didn't understand why they just couldn't throw them. Because they love a prop. They love to do antics. They love to be goofy. Shannon looked really happy. I will say this, and I'm going to say it. This goes for the girls in Salt Lake City, the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives, which, by the way, my niece slash daughter, my girl, one of my closest girlfriends, she's like my sister, I have a couple, of, uh, I have a few of those, but her daughter came over and spent the night last night. I was texting her like, when are you coming? You can't come to see us. So guess what I got her into? Of she course. watched five episodes last night, and then she finished the other two, the Secret Lives of Mormon Wives. But- but I'm going to say to Shannon, I mean this for the Layla's and things over there in Utah. Get somebody black to do them extensions. If I got to keep looking at the back of your head like that, I don't understand why I'm looking she, like or is it not that and she just needs to brush it. I don't understand why Shannon's hair is like that. And I feel for Shannon because I feel like women sometimes symbolize long hair with youth. Mm-hmm. They say older women need to cut their hair. So they, which by the way, I love a bob. Ain't nothing B O B bob. I have a bob. <laughs> but depending on who it is, it can go. It can look soccer bombish. I get it. But I feel like Shannon is hanging on to the, to those long locks. But I need her to brush them, blend them, something. I'm tired. Yeah, and look, as a person who has got like 75 percent fake hair, I have extensions. Okay. You would never be able to tell. Uh, you've, seen, you've seen me multiple times. You cannot tell because I brush them and I know how to lay them down. And I just, I just feel like these girls just like, they just, I just don't understand how they're out there. I mean, I guess it makes sense now. You know what? It makes sense that women with this little self-awareness would end up on a mm. television show. You know what I mean? With I their that, tracks showing. Yeah. With their tracks showing. Exactly. I know she looks crazy every time. I was like, when 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 they when Vicky had went to her. Oh wait, where were they? Oh, when Gina had came to her house. I'm looking at the. I just wanted to reach to the screen and just go like, yeah, like just you know, just like take like a comb, just like yeah. a comb, just just if you just, just run it through once, it'll get hidden. 
And that's it. I was like, what is going on? But she did seem like she got it together a little bit during a little bit of the show. Um, I almost screamed. I don't know why I thought this was so funny when Vicky was in the confessional and she was like, oh, oh man, I had it. She said something about the show and she goes, Shannon doesn't drink. She goes, well, wait, I mean, let me not say that. She drinks, but doesn't drive. I just thought that yeah. was so funny because she wasn't doing it to be like Tamara, she legit. And then when uh, Vicky during the show was like, I want a shot of tequila. And Shannon goes, I'll have a sip. Uh, okay. Here's the thing. Obviously Shannon loves to drink mm -hmm. that. Yeah. And Shannon, um, her, she feels that her issue is that she loves to drink, but her biggest problem is that she got behind the wheel. She doesn't think that the loving to drink is the problem. And like Gina mm. said, nobody can force her to recognize the fact that she has a problem. She feels like her drinking is not the issue. She feels like a whole bunch of other things are her issue, which is like, fine, whatever. But what cracked me up was is it what always cracks me up is the way Shannon orders her drink. She always <laughs> she always whispers. <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, like, she, you know, she's like, I'll have it like uh, the lady, the girl, the backstage girls like getting their orders. <laughs> and she's like, yeah, I'll, I'll have a I'll have a tequila and soda and whatever. Smell. Like, why are you whispering it? Just if you're going to drink, it, if you're going to yeah. do it, be bold. And that's what I wish that how she'd be around Tamara. Like, mm -hmm. check this out. I know. I wish that she would just stand up and say, I know I clipped more than hedges. I know I almost took out somebody's whole living room and I could have hurt someone. I understand all of that and I am regretful. And I have vowed to never get behind the wheel of a car drinking. Right now, I'm not behind the wheel. Leave me alone. It, every time you talk about my drinking, I'm going to talk about your child that doesn't like you. Are we yeah. good? Yeah, I just wish God. she would just go there. I know, but she can't because she's she's too she's too flustered all the time to like think that, that through. Side of the Aries coin because we are air like I don't understand that side. Like she like, come on, wake it up, Shannon. I know. I think she's like too beat down. We need to know like what her moon and her rising are, and I don't think they're they're probably it's probably like Pisces and a Cancer. You know what I mean? Oh yes, oh. yeah. It's, tears, it's like some bullshit tears. water signs that yeah. like are really just. <laughs> fucking it up for her barely letting that fire come out for a second it's dousing the flames yeah, constantly the constantly um some of the cutaways were really funny this episode because it was like shannon being like you know i'm so happy to be on tour it's so good i'm living my best life and then it cuts to it cuts to vicky sorting her pill case holding like wearing like a wrist brace <laughs> Yeah. It was just like so funny because Shannon's like, well, I'm living my best life as this woman in her 60s sorting her pills. It was just like so funny. And then later on, they're at the party. Yes. And they're talking about like Tamara and all of them are talking about curfews. And Tamara goes, uh, they're like, yeah, we don't let our kids out. Like, but there's no reason to be out at three o'clock. And they're like, yeah, you know who's out at three o'clock? The drunks. And then it cuts to Shannon at the live show being like, so I had a DUI. Yes, yeah, yeah. The editing was top tier. When <laughs> Shannon was talking about the thing, she's got so many things going on in her life and they keep showing up or something. And then they cut away to Alexis arriving at the party, getting out of the car. I was like, <laughs> this editing is top tier. So good. Editing. So, good. so good. It was really good. Uh, then we get to, would you attend a Vicky and Shannon live show? No. Me neither. Even if it was free. I don't know. I would no. I, I would have to be covering it as in someone is paying me to go cover it for the podcast, the YouTube. And even then, oh, I don't know how I feel about this. Maybe I should. You know, what? I'm going to say it. I'm going to say it. Yeah. So, you know, T Vicky has that podcast with mm. Christian. Um, right. Uh, I don't know Christian's last name. He's good. He's very funny. No, shout out to Christian. Yeah. I love him. Mm -hmm. Yeah. He's great. Um, he's super funny. I'm, really glad that like he has always been Vicky's number one stand. So yes, like shout has. out to yes. him yes. for getting a podcast with like his favorite reality TV person. That is truly amazing. However, she's an interactionist. Uh huh. And also they just had Kelly Dodd on the show. So I'm like, how do you reconcile that? Yeah, that would be hard. Well, I, it's funny because whenever I think about Vicky, I think about some of her comments in regards to Black Lives Matter and just yep. different things. And I'm like, 
I understand we watch these shows for entertainment and it's even different if they have different political views. If they if we just find out they vote for this person, but when they have had commentary about some of the things and it's in direct conflict um, of a person who looks like you yeah. <laughs> or me, yeah. it's like that would be very hard. It, it would be extremely. Extreme. How do you look past that? So, I mean. Yeah. Shout out to Christian, I guess, for getting past it. I hope they're giving you a lot of money for that. Yeah. And Maybe I, money makes it easy, uh, that an easier pill to swallow, which I'm I, never... It's so expensive to exist in this world. I will never judge you for taking a check, by the way. I. It's funny because I, I was listening to someone and they had had an opportunity and it was with... Uh, they were Black and it was with uh, someone white. And people were like, how can you do that? And she said they don't like us. And again, we, of course, y'all know we don't mean all, right? Yeah. They use us all the time. Yeah. They get checks off of our backs. Look at, look at, look at the NFL players um, and, and the, the owners that didn't want to support taking the knee, but mm -hmm. yet they have no problem playing that making money off the backs of these yeah. uh, players. So she was like, I'm going to do the same way they use us to make money. I'm going to get this check because I'm using them to make money. Yeah, it's just it's not that serious all the time, you know? Yeah, yeah, and I what I said was I hope that she, because Christian is committed to his craft and doing what he does and consistent, I hope that she doesn't flake on him and not like, like all of us, you know how these housewives, oh, yeah, I'm of course, of whatever. course, yeah. yeah. Like, but like you said, shout out to him. If you were offered a podcast with a housewife <gasps> or a Bravo reality star in general, who would you want your co-host to be? Oh, that's such a good question. Who would I want? I would love to do a podcast with Candace. Oh, Candace Dillard Bassett. <clears throat> my triangle queen. When I tell you my little baby twirl. I love her. <laughs> <laughs> I would. Candace would be my second choice. My first choice would be the. I was getting ready to say the late great Lord. She's with, still with us. My God. <laughs> Were you killing? Lanethia. Oh, of course. I, I, in my humble opinion, although people might listen and say, you thinking you and Nini would be a great team is not humble, but I feel like we would bounce off of each other so well. I think I agree. So I, agree. I really think, and I would even let her name go first. If oh, had to wait, you're so name. generous. Nini and T. You You're know. so generous. You're like, I'll let you have that. I'll let you have first billing, Nini. Don't worry. <laughs> Silly. I just feel like we would be great. That too, I would want. Okay. Is there anybody outside of the housewives world that you would want to do one with? Um. Gosh. Uh, I think I would maybe, just thinking through these other shows that exist. I mean, I guess I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to doing a podcast with like Preston from Martha's yeah, Vineyard. That would be really good. That would be really good. Or, um, you know, uh, what's his name? Dylan from Family Karma. Yes. Oh my he God. was great. And um, and I would love to have a podcast with fucking Padma Lakshmi from Top Chef. So <laughs> that is good. That's yeah. really good. You'd get some really good, maybe she would bring food to your recordings if you did in studio. Yeah. I just want to eat with her. Yeah. I just want to stare at her beautiful face and eat with her. That's it. There used to be, I don't know if he still has, but there was a show on Sirius XM. I think they were friends with Jeff Lewis and he's friends with Andy. I think his first name is Bruce, where he, he had a podcast. It was almost like a lunch with Bruce where it was on Sirius XM and you'd hear like the clinking of the glasses and the food, but that's how... They did. And it actually worked like in that. So you and Padma could just go around, you know, I, I would say the country, but um, you have children and a husband, so you might not. Or you could like schedule time to do it. But I don't like, need to be the, around them. <laughs> You're all telling me that Padma Luxury is offering me a check and the opportunity to travel the world and eat with her. See Bye, kids. Yeah, yeah. Bye. All right. I'll FaceTime you. Right. And maybe you guys can fly in to see mommy sometimes. Yeah. Sometimes. Yeah, maybe. exactly. Okay. Oh, that's good. Okay. We got good choices. We're just throwing that out in the atmosphere. So if anybody knows Padma, um, we know Preston, so we can handle that part. Um, if anybody knows 
Padma, Lanethea. <laughs> and also, by the way, I would also give Padma first billing. So she <laughs> think how generous we are. So nice. <laughs> and I think it would be a black and brown job. I'm just saying. <laughs> Those are black and brown, brown jobs. jobs. So yeah, y'all, we're putting that out there. If y'all know them, know their managers, <laughs> hook us up. We're very deserving. Okay, then we get to Jen and her son Dawson, which we talked about. Jen was so open. You said you, you know, you appreciate that scene. Um, gosh, her just being so real, like and raw in that moment. It's all you can ask for in a housewife. While still, like you said, she still has the ability to be real and raw and delusional. I love it. And she's it's a, not a fake delusion. She's a Delulu with a heart of gold. Yeah, a Delulu with a heart of gold. That's what we want. A Delulu with, I love that. Okay, yeah. Jen, we love you. Then we get to the party at Jen's house and we see the flashback, her telling Katie, um, you know, what well, we saw that earlier when she was with Emily and Katie. And she says that, you know, she's got to get acclimated. It's her house too, you know? Uh-huh. Katie makes great face. She gives great faces. She does. She does. She's really pretty. Um, I still feel like you probably a little bit of a Karen, Katie, but I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna. I'm gonna give you a chance. I'm. I'm not gonna close the door. The door is cracked with you. Okay. I'm gonna <laughs> close it. Um, because side note, she didn't. I was reading something from Reality Blurb today. I should have pulled it up. Where Heather was asked where her and Katie were, and it was basically a standard Heather answer, like we weren't friends or whatever, whatever, whatever. Um, but nothing negative. But Katie, I thought was going to take an opportunity to kind of shade a little bit. And she was like, well, as Heather always says, we're not friends. And I get that. But basically, like hoping to move forward, like yeah. her answer was very much like I've been getting my behind handed to me in the media. So I'm gonna go ahead and ease back a little and not. Yeah. Yeah. Start something. So the party at Jen's house, we see the people arriving. I don't know why it pissed me off when I saw Emily walking into rap music. I, I know y'all it's my it's my it's my thing. I know. I know. I was like, y'all couldn't play Taylor or something. I felt two ways about it because initially I, it was like the rap music was on Emily and Gina. And I was like, what is this? And it bothered me. But at the same time, I was like, well, it fit with their, the way they were walking their outfits. It's I mean, it did. But it's also one of those things where it's like usually Bravo saves all of their hip hop ish music yeah, for right. Garcelle on <laughs> Beverly Hills. <laughs> <laughs> it's only for Garcelle. It's like regular, like bum, 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 bum music on like Beverly Hills. And then it goes to Garcia. It's like, psh, psh. Yeah. like, it's like, so that was really bad. Did you really want from us? Yeah, I'm yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you hear DMX barking in the background. And you're like, what's going on? Right. But it's only for Garcelle. So I was like, okay, well, at least they're using some hip hop on white women. See, that's funny that you picked up on that too. And I, I was like. Emily was giving look. I have to admit, I love the hair. She was giving like a round the way girl with the ponytail. All she needed was to be sucking on a lollipop with hoops. But she was giving a little bit of that. So I was kind of like, well, I don't know why. Why, Taria, why did you even notice that? But it was irritating. But so it's, 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 that's a good point. They normally only save it for Garcelle. So yeah, <laughs> that's true. So all the ladies arrive. Alexis. In her 2007 big plat in the middle of her head arrived. Now, I need to ask you this because I may need to go back and watch some old episodes. I don't remember Alexis ever having this new accent that this accent that we're now hearing. I don't know what this accent is. I have no idea what it is. And I think even we because sometimes it sounds like she's you know what she sounds like? Sometimes she sounds like Dolores making fun of Polly. Like it sounds like it's like a fake Irish accent, but then also she's like, okay, guys, I like, I feel better. Like, I'm always like, I'm like, are you being like a Gina? Like, I don't know what this accent is. She's from the Midwest. So I don't know if she's trying to like pull more into like a Midwest, like Wisconsin accent, but I genuinely don't know because she did not have that accent when she I was wondering, I was like, was her old speak her trying to fit into Orange County and speaking like them. And now this mid now I, I didn't realize it was Midwestern, but now yeah. this is coming out, but it's coming out an awful lot. So is this how you talk at home? But when you get on camera, you talk yeah. different either way. I was like, what, what is this? Who yeah. Are you? Yeah. Agreed. Oh my gosh. Okay. So what I thought was funny, I wish they had have laughed in her face. But I do like how they all decided to get up to pee when she brought up how stressed she was. 
because of the lawsuit. I was screaming inside, like, you're stressed because of a lawsuit that has nothing to do with you that could have been over. Yeah. She says a couple of things in this episode, like around this time when she's like freaking out. Number one, I think it's hilarious that Emily said, I guess John Jansen has a pipe, which is a frazzled woman. And is that a is that a type or is that his mark? You know what I mean? Is that Mm -hmm. is that who he cons? Does he look for women in fragile situations? Because he um, because we learned that Alexis broke up with her fiance, lost her mother. And then she meets John Jansen. Right. That to me feels like he is taking advantage of a woman in a fragile space. It doesn't feel like she's like she just broke up with her fiance who she was crazy over on Below Deck. Yes, she was. Drew, right? His name was she called him Drew. I don't know what his name was, but she was like toasting to him and talking about how he was the greatest love of her life and all this stuff. So it's just like it's like. It's it was just weird. It was just a lot. Um, And I think that that was a big tell. And then her getting so emotional and upset, it it made me concerned because I was like, is she getting emotional and upset because he's not being nice to her because he's going Mm. through these things? And then it made me kind of feel bad for her because I was like, well, that's not great either. Like if she's if he's putting her in that position, but he, he might be one of those monsters. That's like, because of the stupid woman who, who, you know, you should have tried to control it and you should have told her to pay me and you should have whatever. And he's making her feel like it's her responsibility to fix this since that she's like, since she's on the show with Shannon, like, I don't know. It just, part of me was like, yes, Alexis is a crazy person. And the other part of me was like, I think she might be in a really bad place. And it sucks to grow up because I want to just be a hater, but I, I do have a little yeah. bit of empathy for her. You know, I feel sad yeah. for her. Because like you said, the way she came in so hot and she kept saying, clear his name, clear his name, clear his name. Yes, exactly. Like telling her because Shannon did say that John used to strategize with her. Yes. Mm, mm, mm. That that's yeah. Oh. I was getting ready to say poor Shan. Um, I get you with growing up the empathy thing, but I cannot say poor Alexis. I'll just say Alexis. I hope who that if you're in a bad situation, you get out. Yes, yes, exactly. Because um, that was a, a a point when Emily said he likes a certain type, like he has a type. Yeah. Um, the argument, Heather, yes. Emily, yes. thoughts. Okay. Um, like I said earlier how you feel about your own body is nobody else's problem. Emily approaches the situation with Heather. And here's the thing that we have to remember from last episode at the fashion show, Heather asked Emily a couple of times, are you good? Are we good? Are you okay? Are we good? Are you sure you're okay? And Emily says, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. At my grown ass, whole ass adult age at this point in my life, if I ask you, if we're good and you tell me that we're good, I'm going to believe you. But if you think that we're going to get in a group setting, come on, and you're going to come at me and make me feel like I did something wrong to you when I asked you if you were good, don't. Like, then you have another thing coming because that's what she did. She tried to make Heather feel bad about the fact that she had a emotional experience. And look, here's the thing. Emily, how she feels about her body, it makes me sad for her because, first of all, Emily's stunning. Mm-hmm. She's Her body is insane. She's built like an Olympic athlete. Like, she has a sick body. Yeah. But the thing is, Emily is still comparing her body. She's chasing a body that her body will never be. Right. Emily's chasing the blonde, skinny, white woman mm-hmm. from Orange County. She's chasing a Jen or an Alexis or a Tamara. Yeah. But- Emily, your body's never going to look that way. So her even getting upset, like, oh, it was a size 12 dress. If that's the dress that fits you, then who gives a fuck if it's a size and 12 I, dress? I caught that and I was like, mm. so if anybody else said that, Emily would say, well, I feel like she would say, well, what are you trying to say about size 12s? And I was like, see, it, it, it comes out like you don't want, you know, like. Exactly, yeah. exactly. And so she's approaching the situation all the way bad because she feels bad about herself. Mm -hmm. But again, it's not Heather's responsibility to fix that. The other thing is she's, she's never going to get the warm and fuzzies from Heather. No one is except her children. Exactly. 
Exactly. You're not going to get warm and fuzzies from Heather. So I don't know what kind of response she was looking for Heather to give her. But I go back to Heather asked you if you were good at the fashion show. You said everything was fine. You had a whole next day in Sonoma to address this with Heather. You didn't address it with Heather. Instead, you stewed. You talk shit about Heather. You talk Mm -hmm. shit about the situation to everybody else. And then you cornered her in a group setting to make Heather look like some sort of monster. Yes. And then had the nerve to get pissed off. And then go up to Heather and say, can we talk privately? You, If I was Heather, she wouldn't have got it for me either. Nah, because that's, that's what you should have done the first time. Exactly. That's what you should. But you wanted to talk in a group setting because we know the setup. In a group setting, everyone has an opinion. There was a way to be truthful about how you felt while still having an on-camera moment, if that's what you thought, without trying to put me on blast. What else did they want from Heather? She apologized. If you don't think her apology is genuine, I don't understand what what else you think. She, she's not going to cry with you. Mm-hmm. That's just not her makeup. I I was livid. And I, I, I go back to it's OK for you to holler and scream when you get upset. Now, if somebody matches your energy, then see, that would be a problem. Like I, and she it, it reminds me of a kid. Yeah, she turned into a teenager. Yeah. She was like, like she was moments away from being like, oh, mom, you don't understand me. Like, that's the way she was talking to Heather. She was talking to Heather like a whiny teenager. And Heather doesn't have any patience for people who approach her that way. Now, what Heather said in the confessional. I was wondering, was she referring? I need her to come out and say. They talked about the jacket being oversized and you were like, well, the like. Because Emily didn't like the word oversized. Mm -hmm. I was like, I hope, please tell me that the producers, because you know how they'll ask questions, but you know, sometimes you don't hear the question. You hear the answer. Did they say to her, well, Emily, how do you feel about Emily being upset about the oversized comment? Yeah. The dress was tight. And the thing is, like, if Emily's whole thing is, I'm not a size 12, I'm smaller than that. But then Heather's like, well, you're not because a size 12 dress fit you. In fact, it was tight on you. That's those them's be the facts. Like, yeah. I don't know what to tell designer, you. Yeah, that, that's what it is. And then also for her to be like, well, Alexis was put in a smaller dress. Yeah, because Alexis has a different body than you yeah, do, Emily. She's smaller. It doesn't mean you're big. It means she's smaller. That's it. Exactly. And again, I think that in that whole situation, Emily is in a war with herself and her body and how she feels about herself. It's not anybody else's problem. It's really not. She just like didn't approach it well. I think it doesn't help that last season, um, Heather said that her hair looking a mess looked like snuffleupagus. Remember that whole fight? So I think that Heather, Emily just feels really um, triggered by Heather. I think also Heather is like somebody who holds all her emotions in. She doesn't snap. Heather won't lose her shit. Emily loses her shit a lot. And I think the fact that Emily can't often often cannot control her emotions also triggers Emily like that. She like the fact that Heather can control her emotions and Emily can like the more calm Heather is when Emily's talking to her, the more upset Emily gets. Yeah, because Heather didn't argue back with her. She was like, all right. okay, yeah. What I did think was hilarious was Alexis throwing herself into the mix. That was so insane, which I thought I agreed with Emily. This doesn't have anything to do with you. But also at the same time, I thought back to Gina and Jen and how that had nothing to do with you, her not paying her bills. And you were all in that. You inserted yourself in that conversation and you're still carrying it on. Yes. Alexis, though, is hilarious. I didn't even do anything. I just put the dress on. (laughs) I'm a broken woman. I'm a broken bird. She's I'm having the worst bird. day of my said, life. Tell and me I, you watch Orange. I mean, Beverly Hills without telling me you watched Beverly Hills when Elvin keeps on it. Broken bird. I'm a broken bird. I'm having the worst day of my life. Is this the worst day of your life? You've this, been divorced. Right. You were married to Jim Bellino. You had children with him. That's this is the worst this day of your life. This is the worst day. You talked about how you lost your parent. Like, you know what I mean? But yeah. this is the worst day. Please. When she said, I'm faced with John's ex everywhere I go. That's because you're going where John X is. <laughs> she belongs there. You're trying to get there. Okay. And I think that I wonder because the fact that Emily said, shut up, this isn't about you. You're just a friend. Like that was so funny. But I also yeah. wonder if Heather, if, if Alexis recently was told that she's not going to be full time. 
and that's why oh, wow. Emily threw it in her face. And that's also why Alexis is is um sorry, did I say Heather? I'm sorry. I wonder if Alexis was recently told that she's not going to be for full time and that she's just going to be a friend of. And I wonder if that's why Emily threw it in her face, but also wonder if that's why Alexis was so upset. Like oh, the producers my. decided we're going to prioritize Shannon because wow. Shannon's actually sharing her whole life. You are not sharing your whole life. You can't. And your boyfriend allegedly doesn't want to be on camera. And so we're going to make you friend of. Oh my gosh. Which would then explain why he shows up at the end. Yeah. Hope, her hoping for an orange the next season. Yeah. I could so see that. Oh, And you know what? 10 out of 10. Great episode. Would recommend. Yeah. Would recommend. Absolutely. Recommend. It was so funny. Um, just real quick. The truth of Jared Jenga. I'm so sick of these franchises pissing and showing body parts when it has nothing to, to me, it's so juvenile. When I, my, well, I'm going to say that my friends, even as a juvenile, that's just not something that we did. No, I've, I've, I was also, I was a teenager, not that long ago, but I, (laughs) those years, but you know, I was a teenager 20 years ago. And we didn't do that. And we didn't even have like uh, phones to keep us from doing those things. You know, like we could have done it. Nobody would have documented it either. But nobody was pissing and shitting themselves as much as Tamara loves to. That was so disgusting. Like y'all are show me your butthole. Like how oh, girl, I was like, what? what is what is that? Like these antics. I was so can you imagine Atlanta. Show me your butthole. No, excuse me. No. Now, if it was more like a Bolo episode, there would be some stuff going on. That would be a little bit different. different. But different. there's no way in the world. I was just, I was disgusted by the Jenga. And not just show me your butthole like uh, two episodes ago or something. Tamara was like, oh yeah, we went drinking and I put my finger in Emily's yeah. butthole. Yeah, what? she put it. Yeah, she, she was like, yeah, yep, 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 yep. And lest, lest we forget these women are not showering daily. You're letting somebody put a finger. You're putting your finger in somebody's. It's, it's but, nasty. Yeah. Yeah. And I don't ma- no, I don't want to see it. That's so gross. It was just bizarre. It was it's like the worst part of Housewives. Like, yeah, because it, it's like, what is this your version of livening up the event? Mm-mm, no, thank you. I don't like it. Oh, my gosh. But all in all, like you said, great. Episode. Out of 10. We recommend this whole season has been good. I wonder how many episodes we're getting. Well, we're past the halfway point. So, and they do still have to go to Ireland. That's right. So maybe we're in for like a 20 episode season or so. It's possible. We got to go to Ireland and next week it didn't show like we're going to go to Ireland or anything. Right. Next week is the, uh, oh, we still got to get through the Jen and Ryan stuff. That's right. We have to get through Ryan getting um, caught up in a gambling scandal. (laughs) I, I need to, we need an update. Like, is he dismissed from it? What's going on? Cause Ryan has a nice hat. Like he c- couldn't really, we couldn't really get a definitive answer on what he does. Yeah. I think he's a bookie. I think that's what he is. I think he makes money from gambling, mm-hmm. which is like, you know, not a way I would make money, but it's, you know, I, I was going to say they should legalize it, but then the government would want a piece of it. And there's no way probably to, well, I mean, it is legal. Like sports gambling is legal, oh, that's, and yeah, that's, that's what he does. So I think they. Oh, keep, I, I think, think that's how he makes okay. money. Okay. Yeah. So I mean, I don't know if that's how he makes money. Look, there are people on the internet making money doing weirder stuff. We got showing buttholes and showing buttholes on. and pissing on concrete patios. To me, on the concrete. Now it's the, like oh, and, and then I- you know what she did? She was taking pool water and using it to like put it into the pool girl Mm -mm. she didn't even wipe i would kick that person out of my house yeah so now you're sitting your pissy self on my outdoor furniture and you're you just put your hands in that pissy water and now you're gonna what eat off of my charcuterie board like yeah you gotta go you gotta leave and don't touch nothing on your way out go straight out the back don't matter i'll walk you out don't touch nothing on nasty do not pass go do not collect two hundred dollars go and, straight to jail and that's a person you look at it's like i could never eat at your home you can't eat at everybody's house no mm-hmm. no mm-hmm. oh no. my gosh nor 
Yes. Thank you so much for making time for me on this Friday to record this episode. I promised you we'd be in and out and see, I kept my, we, I feel like I'm well fed. Yeah. Episode. I may watch it again, actually, because I was watching it on my phone, but oh. I may have to watch it because I was out and then I had to, I was like, all right, I got to go to the gym before the recording. So I will watch it on my phone. Yeah. So now I need to see it big screen where I don't have to take notes where I'm actually just watching. It's so fun. Yeah. So fun. I never realized just how important that was until I started actually taking notes before it would just be off the top of the head and be like, well, I kind of do want to take some notes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nor, please let everybody know if they do not where they can find you. Sure. You can find me at the reality is pod everywhere. Podcasts are found. You can also find me at the reality is pod on Twitter and Instagram. You can head over to patreon.com slash the reality is pod for, uh, you know, paywall content, video episodes, ad free episodes, some bonus episodes. And that's that. Thank you for having me. Oh my gosh. Anytime. And we're actually scheduling. I got to go back through our text to see for you to come back and talk Salt Lake City, I think in the next two weeks or so. I'm trying to get all my Salt Lake City people in here really quick in less than five minutes because I know you have to go. What was your, like, explain the feelings that were um, reverbing through your body, vibrating through your body as you watched the first episode? My okay, so I oh, I'm like a scroller when I watch these shows because I'm like, whatever, I don't care that much. I don't really take notes on a lot of the stuff anymore, but I couldn't even scroll my phone while I was watching Salt Lake City because I was like, this is top tier television. It was so good. The weird like drone in yeah. like this. Um, Tom Hamlet said it sounded like the beginning of an AMC uh, movie with like <laughs> Nicole Kidman being like, we come to this place for magic like that's what it felt like they're like we we put our lives on the line like all this stuff it was just so good and then like just the antics the fact that the entire show was soundtracked over like it was like a mixture of like the celestial ha ha ha's with like clown music yes. it just was so good like everybody is so wackadoo they all seem like caricatures angie k coming in with that scroll cracking me the fuck up yes like yes I'm obsessed. Meredith's fight makes no sense at all. She's mad about the bath bombs, but really what she should be mad about is the way that the bath bombs were advertised, which is obviously shady and taking a dig. Yeah, that's something totally different, right? And like Meredith doesn't have, she's she's on the wrong cocktail of medication to like be able to put those words together. So instead she's just like, you made bombs. And you're like, what are you saying? What are you saying? And your breast tissue continues to grow? Wow. Congratulations. I, do, hello. Yeah. You went from a triple D back that from a B to a triple D then back. To, like that's insane. crazy. One thing I love to see, I feel like Mary is a bit more relaxed and not so <laughs> everything is, is so uh, everything is just so she's so offended by everything. I actually enjoyed the conversation between her Bronwyn and that Brittany. That was so funny to me. I love the fact that she said it must have happened recently where she was putting bread in a purse because young people don't, young kids don't have purse. And I said, Mary, although I don't believe it happened recently, I will give you credit. I'll give you E for effort. And you never call Mary Cosby poor. Have you heard that clip of her at church yelling at people for not getting her enough birthday cards? She's like, next. Yeah. She was like, I never said that. So funny. Brittany I was like, it. oh, okay. And Bronwyn is 38. There we go. Okay. Hmm. Hmm. They don't exfoliate. All right. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, thank you so much for listening to me and Noor. We love you all so much. Please make sure to, if you're listening, um, wherever it is you listen to your podcast for what else is going on, could you please then come on over and play with me on YouTube, We Go W E I G O Podcast. And if you're watching, if you could please do your homegirl a favor and come on over to um, the iTunes, the Apple, to, or Spotify, wherever it is you listen, and just hit that follow or subscribe button for the podcast. And also come follow me on Instagram at We Go Podcast. I'll make sure to put all Norse information in the description box. And we will talk to y'all later. See ya. Bye. Bye.